perfect number. Number six, right? Okay. All right. So let's see. We have, I think it's just the algorithm that is a little bit confusing um, to, to get this, but we'll, we'll see. So let me just increase this size. Okay. So write an application displays every perfect number between one and 1,000. Okay. So I guess the definition is what is the perfect number? Okay. The perfect number is one that equals the sum of all the numbers that divide evenly into it itself, right? So for example, six is perfect because one, two, and three are all divisible by, by actually one, three yeah, is divisible by that number. And so you will add one, two, and three together to get that total of six. Okay. Uh, a 12 is not because one, three, uh, six, one, two, three, four, and they're all, and six, they're all divisible by it, dividing two by there. The sum is not equal to that number. Okay. So, so if the sum equal to that number, then that's a perfect number, and then you would print that up, or, or save that number. So, that is the question. All right. Let's see if we can do this together. So this is the perfect number. Oh, I don't want to put up here. Sorry. I just want it class, basically. Let's do it. Class, perfect number. OK. So we need a number between one and a thousand, right? Um, so basically, you can put into variables. If not, you just put into the, the for loop, right? For one to a thousand. So we'll say for um, and i is zero, and then i is less than equal to a thousand inclusive. I think that's what it means inclusive. The i plus plus. Okay, so that's the first thing we do, right? We loop that to, um, well, I actually forgot my, <coughs> my main method, sorry. Public static void main. Then. Okay. All right, so we'll start one, we'll go through 100. I, I, actually, it says one, right? Is there not included? I don't think it includes uh, a zero. This is one. Okay, so because zero doesn't, it's already it's automatic. So you can omit one. Uh, I mean, I'll omit zero. Okay. So we'll just put like one, two, a thousand. And the one should be a perfect number, right? It's divided itself into itself. So what you do is you would do, um, so how would you do this? You divide. Um, right, so you're going to look at all the numbers from 1 all the way to that number. So when you go 1, it's going to be just 1 to 1. When you come to i to 2, it's going to be 1, 2, that's it. When i is 10, I have to start from 1 all the way through 10, right? And then if it's well, those numbers are divisible by, by, by divided into 10, you, you keep those, and then you add them up and see if it equals the number or not, right? Okay, so um, you can call it i. You want to replace something more um, uh, specific. You can call this the magic number, if that makes sense. Um, maybe just let me just rename that magic number. Okay, I will put that here. 
So the magic number will start at one. And then, <clears throat> so when we go to one, we have to count the, we start from one to that number. When we go to 100, we have to start from one to that number also. So you need an internal loop, <clears throat> okay? Right? So you need another loop here. Uh, we'll see if that's the case. So from this time, it's going to be from, we we'll just call it i this time because that's a, it doesn't, uh, it's not really that important anymore, right? Uh, i is, uh, we'll just again start from 1. We'll skip 0 because 0 won't work. And then i will be less than equal to that number. We can include that. What that number is going to be the magic number. Okay, up to the number. Every time we look through this, we have to start over again uh, from i, which is 0, to that number. Okay, so we track the matching number, and then we start, every time we loop through this, we start from 1 up to that number, and then we'll do a division, right? So how do you know if it's a divisible by that number or not? So we'll check, is 1 divisible by that magic number? If it is, you save that number. And then uh, if it's 2, and then you save that number. If it's three, if it's now, you skip it, right? So, since we haven't learned about arrays yet, if you have an array, you can actually store those numbers to an array. But if it's not, you can do the summation right away. Okay. So instead of you know storing that, you just add it to a sum. And if at the sum, when the end of the loop, the the inner loop is is, is completed, you compare the total. Mm -hmm. If the total of those numbers equals to the magic number, then that's a the magic number. Right? I think that's how, how it works, right? Okay. So here I'm going to do is, so ab maybe above here, uh, right right here, um, we want to declare a variable to store the sum of those numbers. So um, I, I will put an int sum, and we'll just put zero for now. So right in here, we'll, we'll check the first one. So it's going to be basically, um, I'll say if the magic number is divisible by i equals 0, right? That is divided into it, right? We get a remainder 0. That means it's divided evenly into the number. If that is the case, then I'm going to add i to the sum. Okay? So with sum equals i. If it's not, I'll skip it. Right. So if it's 1, so the magic number is 1. 1 comes in here, so from 1 to 1 inclusive. So I do 1 divided by 1, I get a remainder 0. Yeah, that's a, it divides right into 1. So I add 1 mm -hmm. to the sum, sum now has 1. And then the next thing is 2, okay, well I exceed 2 already, I'm done. So once I'm done, I'm out of this loop, and then out of that, I'm go down here, and then it goes to the before it goes to the next number, before it goes to two. You check the sum. If the sum is equal to the current magic number, then that is the magic number, and you print it out. If it's not, then you will just skip it, right? That's how I would do it. So right after the inner loop, I'm going to check the sum. So I'll say if the sum is equal to the magic number, because we're still at the current magic number, if it, we're still at 1. So in that case, 1 is equal to 1. If that's the case, then I print 1 out. Okay, so uh, system out will print the magic number. And then we go to the next number. Now we increment the number to 2 now. So 2 comes in here. The sum is reset to 0 again. So make sure you reset that. And that's why you put it inside the for loop here. If you put it outside, it wouldn't work. Because if you put it outside here, the sum will still be 1 already. And it will retain from where it was before. So it will never work, right? So you have to reset the number. If you put it outside, you have to reset the sum back to 0 again. And I guess it depends on where you put it. So now 2 comes in, and then the whole process starts again. 1 from 1 to 2. Is, is uh, 1 divided into 2? Uh, yes, 
So I get 1. And then 2. I mean, 1 to 1. Yeah, 1 to 2. And then 2 divided by 2. Yes. So that's 2. And then now 2 plus 1 is 3. Right? So I'm done. Down here, 3 is not equal to 2. So this is not a magic number. It skips that. So that's the thing. Right? So does the logic make sense? I think. I haven't tried it yet, but I see. And then you test three. So you only take the numbers that are divisible by that, from those numbers up to that number. If it is, you add it to a sum. You accumulate those. And then when you're done with that loop, you check if the sum is equal to that same number. If they are equal, then that is the magic number. And you print it out. Or inside here? Inside the inside the loop here? Right. So in your declaration of I that there's this magic number that you get Oh, okay. If it's inclusive? Okay. Yeah, right, right. I think you you're right, because you if you add it up, it's gonna include the number, so it would never equal. So that's that's a good that's a good catch. Yeah, because if it's if it's a two, then uh, well, yeah, two plus whatever it is is going to be more than that magic number. Yeah, yeah, good, good catch. So I think you're right. This part's okay, but this part down here, right, you cannot include that magic number itself. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's it's going to be always more than the total. Okay, so let's see. Let's give it a shot and see what happens. Does it look right? Six twenty eight, five seven. Well, let's see. Uh, didn't show here, I guess. Or is there an answer? Well, we know that six is, and the other two are not here, but. Yeah, that looks about right, right? So the only three of those are magic numbers. And if you try a larger number, like uh, 10,000, okay, and you got another one. So there's only a few magic numbers in there. Okay, so that's how you solve it, I guess. It's one way. I'm sure the other ways as well. But um, so it's, it's that, that logic that you take from one up to the number again. But good catch on the equal thing. It would never equal. There's no magic number if you do that.